In the year 1984, Wing Commander Rakesh Sharma was the first Indian to go to space. He was a part of an India-Soviet Union joint mission. Sharma spent eight days aboard the Salyut 7 space station. When he was in space, Sharma received a call from the then Prime Minister of India, Indira Gandhi. How does India look from space? She asked. Sari jahan se acha, Sharma replied. The most beautiful in the world. Hello and welcome. This is Gravitas Plus. I am Molly Gambhir. I'm sure like me, you too were glued to your screens on the 23rd of August when Chandrayaan 3 landed on the moon. What a moment of pride that was. I'm here to tell you that Chandrayaan 3 is just the beginning. ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization, has a list of ambitious missions lined up, from a mission to study the sun to putting Indians in space. ISRO is booked and busy. And with Chandrayaan 3 on the moon, ISRO will now turn to the sun. That's right. In early September, India will be sending a solar mission. Its name is Aditya L1. It is India's first space-based mission to study the sun. ISRO aims to put Aditya L1 around the Lagrange point one of the Sun-Earth system. This is about 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth. And from there, Aditya L1 will be able to continuously view the sun without any eclipses. The mission will carry out round-the-clock imaging of the sun it will observe solar activities and their effect on space weather in real time. The main goal of Aditya L1 will be to help track Earth-directed storms and predict the impact through solar observations. Have other countries sent similar missions? Yes, they have. In fact, NASA sent the Parker Solar Probe in the year 2018. And during its flyby of the sun, the Parker Solar Probe faced blistering hot temperatures. We are talking about more than 1,000 degrees Celsius. And yet, the mission has remained fully operational. Aditya L1 will not face such heat. It will stay farther from the sun. Here's what's interesting. Like Chandrayaan 3, many of Aditya L1's instruments and competence are being made in India for the first time. And it's both a challenge and an opportunity. And India's scientific, engineering and space communities are giving in their best. And after Aditya L1, you have Gaganyaan. Any idea what this mission is all about? Well, it's India's first manned space flight. India is sending humans to space. Gaganyaan will be a three-day mission. There will be three crew members aboard. They will be launched into an orbit of 400 kilometers. You see, ISRO has been preparing for this human space flight for a while now. It has been training astronauts, working on space suits. But as ISRO works on the space mission, it's also simultaneously working on another moon mission. And this one, by the way, is in collaboration with the Japanese Space Agency. This mission is called LUPEX or Lunar Polar Exploration. A Japanese rocket will carry an Indian lander and a Japanese rover to the moon. The goal of this mission is to confirm and investigate the presence of water on the lunar poles. Also to gain insight into how water on the moon evolved to its present state. And also learn about the moon's environment. Not just the sun and the moon, ISRO is also working towards zooming in more closely on the home planet. You know, learn more about planet Earth. ISRO and NASA will be putting together a powerful Earth observation satellite. It's being called NISAR, N-I-S-A-R, or NASA ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar. And it is scheduled to be launched in the year 2024. The satellite will track movements of Earth's land and ice surfaces in extremely fine detail. This will deepen understanding of climate change, deforestation, also the melting of glaciers, also volcanoes, earthquakes. The satellite will also map the entire globe in 12 days. 
and help scientists understand the dynamics of our forests, our wetlands, and our agricultural lands. And as I speak, this satellite is coming together in Bengaluru. Not just that, ISRO is also working on a project to study X-ray sources. The mission is called the ExpoSat, or X-ray polarimeter satellite. It is India's pioneering mission aimed at studying the dynamics of astronomical sources in extreme conditions. And what are these sources? They are the black holes, the neutron stars, the active galactic nuclei, and the pulsar wind nebulae. These essentially are complex emission mechanisms that challenge our current understanding. India's ExpoSat endeavor marking a significant milestone in the country's space research efforts. The mission will provide valuable insights into the nature and behavior of these celestial objects. It also holds the promise of a better understanding of our universe and make big contributions in astrophysics. It is only the world's second polymetry mission using X-ray. NASA launched its IXPE in the year 2021 and ExpoSat is expected to blast off later this year. And then we have the Shukrayaan-1 mission. Believe it or not, ISRO is working towards sending a spacecraft to Venus. It is one of the most hostile places in our solar system. ISRO is also preparing a spacecraft that can orbit the Venus. The goal is to unravel what lies behind the curtain of sulfuric acid clouds that engulf this planet. The mission is set to be launched in 2024. But if we miss the window, the next opportunity will not arise until 2031. And Sweden is also participating in India's upcoming Venus Orbiter mission. It has also contributed a number of scientific instruments for the mission. So there you have it. The moon is just the beginning for India and the Indian Space Research Organization. The coming months are very exciting. And the success of Chandrayaan-3 will only encourage ISRO to aim for greater heights and push the boundaries of space exploration. We wish ISRO and India scientists all the very best.